Let's continue down the body now. We're going to move into the abdomen. We're going to talk about traumatic abdominal injuries right now. We will talk about other problems in the abdomen later, but right now I just want to talk about traumatic injuries. Things, again, coming from the outside, causing traumatic problems. I'll give you the end of this lecture right now. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot we can do for any traumatic injury to the abdomen. Traumatic abdominal injuries are going to require surgery. They're going to require imaging just to even figure out what's going on. What we're going to do is simply monitor our patient, watch for complications, watch for worsening, and evacuate them if needed. What are the kinds of traumatic injuries we can have? Well, first off, we have to understand the types of organs that are in your abdominal cavity. You have hollow organs and solid organs. Solid organs are those organs that are highly vascularized, meaning there are a lot of blood vessels going to them, which means they carry a lot of blood. They can bleed out very easily. Think about your liver, your pancreas, your spleen, and your kidneys. These are solid organs. If you rupture one of these, you have a very high chance of bleeding and potentially bleeding out. Now, don't think bleeding out means you have to bleed out onto the ground. You can bleed internally and lose a lot of blood. Your body contains cavities, lots of empty space. You can hold a lot of blood in those cavities. Let me give you an example. Your pelvic cavity, right here. If you rupture something in your pelvic cavity, you can hold four to six liters of blood inside your pelvic cavity not even losing any to the outside. Your femoral cavities, if you rupture a femoral artery, you can bleed two to four liters of blood into each femoral cavity, again, without losing any to the outside. Well, how much blood do you have in your body? Depending on your size, your gender, you have five to seven liters of blood in your body. So potentially, you can bleed out your entire blood volume inside of you. This is why solid organ rupture is such a danger. How do I know that someone has potentially ruptured a solid organ or is bleeding internally into their abdomen? Bruising is going to be your best indicator. You're going to look for signs of bruising. Bruising on the abdomen, bruising on the flanks, bruising on the back. That tells you that you have bleeding. You might see distension, meaning it's getting bigger. You might get rigidity, meaning the abdomen is really hard to push on. All of those after a traumatic event to the abdomen tell me that I have potential bleeding and I need to get out and seek further care. Then we have hollow organs. Hollow organs are those things that are hollow. They're your bladder, your stomach, your gallbladder. Those hollow organs all have something relatively in common. They contain products that are going to become waste at some point. You can add your intestines into that as well. All of those things, if I rupture them, are going to leak contents into my abdominal cavity. Sure, you're going to bleed a little bit, but bleeding is not my main concern. When it comes to hollow organ rupture, I'm thinking about infection. Someone who has a traumatic injury to their abdomen and ruptures their stomach or their bladder has the potential for developing sepsis. Sepsis is simply whole body infection. What are signs and symptoms of this? Well, we'll talk more about infection when we get to soft tissue injuries, but generally, fever. You start to see somebody who's showing a fever, that's an infection. If you have traumatic injury to the abdomen, you get signs and symptoms of an infection. You're also going to have bruising. You might have some swelling as well. You potentially have hollow organ rupture. Now, with abdominal problems, if you suspect anything greater than just a surface bruise with abdominal trauma, you need to evacuate them. Like I said at the beginning, there's not a whole lot we can do for these. It's palliative care. It's simply taking care of the patient, making them comfortable, monitoring them, and getting them out. There is one other question that we need to ask when it comes to abdominal problems. I'm going to leave it as a teaser for a moment to make you think about it, because we're going to come back to it when we talk about the acute abdomen or disease processes in the abdomen.